A few weeks back, we talked about why a husband should be the primary initiator in sex. If you haven't heard those episodes, we encourage you to go back and check those out. I mm-hmm. think we made a pretty compelling argument. Leadership is squarely on the husband's shoulders. Mm-hmm. The word headship is a biblical one, and it comes with all kinds of baggage. And leadership is one of those things. And we believe that that should permeate the entirety of a couple's life mm-hmm. for their good. It's yeah. it's it's for their health, and it's for the glory of God. It's a very beautiful, wonderful thing. Um but then we, as we were talking about it, we had this question, or actually we had, we kind of in passing said, hey, there's all these purposes. So yeah. if, if you don't detach, so excuse me, if you detach the purposes of sex yes. from it, yes, then it becomes like this, oh, I just want the physicality of it. I want the right. physical it's, act of it. Mm-hmm. But the only, re, the only way that husband initiating makes sense, that us having a whole podcast, two podcast episodes <laughs> dedicated to that, the only reason that makes sense is if you have in, in view these what we, I think eightfold purposes and yeah. there's probably more, there's, there's ways to pull it apart, but there's mm-hmm. different purposes for sex, the things that it accomplishes, the things that, the things that as a couple, we can hope to gain mm-hmm. by, Amen. by having a healthy sex life. So today we are dedicating to, <laughs> what are we dedicating, dedicating it to Selena? Talking. The purposes of sex. Purposes <laughs> like them. So yeah, we will see you on the other side. we've talked about this like thousands of times Mm. (laughs) but when I went back to actually search for like purposes of sex we've never actually named an episode or like had a talk we've written about it we've talked around it we've right. talked about it probably mis- named it something different but right what would, what do we I'm very it? surprised yeah. by myself <laughs> by ourselves <laughs> that uh we did not already have this type of episode out there. I think, yeah. And there's different kind of angles you take on like, what's the grand purpose of it? Right. What are the spiritual purposes of it? But yeah. I think today we're going we're gonna to touch on those two things, which t- to me are the most kind of obvious ones. Yes. And then we're going to get into some really granular purposes that I think are freeing. I know when I had this conversation, so this came out of a conversation back way back when, when we first kind of formulated the, these, uh, that I had with a good friend mm-hmm. and he was going through the scriptures and he was, and I was just like, you are so right that either <laughs> when I go, when you go to your spouse mm-hmm. for sex, it's, it's not one dimensional, right? There's multiple reasons you would go to one another. Yeah. And, and the, the things you think of first are like the most obvious ones. Right. Those are like just the beginning of yeah. that journey. Which is so beautiful. Yeah. It's very beautiful. Just like you, my <sighs> lovely wife. You're this so is Selena. Sweet. I was going to say, if you my- don't know any of us yet, <laughs> just keep us, wondering. All of us. <laughs> just keep wondering. Us, we'll get to it. My name is Ryan. This is my lovely wife, Selena. We are the Fredericks. We do the Fierce Marriage Podcast. We also have written a number of books. Go to fiercemarriage.com and check those out. It's actually shop.fiercemarriage.com. We have a number of books on pursuit and praying with and for one another. We have books on communication, which mm-hmm. those are our latest ones. We're currently working on books on manhood and womanhood. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm excited for that. Uh, what, are you calling, what are you calling yours? Lovely ladies. <laughs> Yes. Vote in the comments if you want, if you want Selena to, <laughs> to name her book "Lovely Ladies." It's too. It's too. <laughs> it's not that. It's going to that song that has that's. Les Mis. Lovely no. ladies. No, I was thinking. Oh gosh, I was thinking not that. Lovely what lady lumps. Oh yeah. Well, Fergie the action. more secular song. <laughs> it's They're mysterious. They're mysterious. No one knows what it means. <laughs> anyway, uh, thank you for joining us. Uh, we like to have fun on this podcast. Um, if you want to support us, become part of the Fierce Fellowship. Go to fiercemarriage.com slash partner. And that's one of the main reasons, one of the main ways God yeah. has seen fit to provide for our family. About mm. half, maybe a little under half of our monthly kind of income comes from that. Just yes. people saying, yes, keep doing what you're doing. And let me tell you, it's working. Yes. It's helping. So thank you. Um, and if you can't hear it, I have to say this, otherwise it'll bother me. I'm a little stuffy right now. I'm just, I'm coming off of a, some sort of viral thing. <laughs> he's every morning, you know, I think I'm, I'm better. <laughs> the last like five days. He's like, I'm I better. I think today's the day. I'm like, you've been saying that. Just, just let it ride. You don't have, there's no pressure here. So just do what work, you got to do. And I do my job. I do my, my stuff, <laughs> take care of my family. And then, and then I then collapse. About, then about three o'clock, I'm like, Oh no. <laughs> it's happening. <laughs> so this is actually after three o'clock. So, so I think this is proof in the pudding right now. I think you took We're some medicine. But anyway. I did not. Okay. Why do you lie liar? <laughs> you, I am medicine free. Medicine I'm, I'm free. Okay. Free. Well, I take it back then. <laughs> so uh our hope today, I think, for this episode is that we provide you with kind of a basic biblical foundation for why God created sex, what are the purposes of sex within marriage. Um, and 
are there reasons why we aren't actually stepping into those purposes? So kind of a little bit of a self-examination, you know, what are, what are some of the, I don't want to say weaknesses, but maybe fears and maybe just tendencies that would keep us away from actually fulfilling the purposes fully, you know, to God's glory right. uh, and to the, the goodness of us and our marriage. So let's just, are we going to dive into this or do you want to talk about other things? Well, I want to dive into it, but let's talk about the purpose thing uh, real quick because an analogy comes to mind. I love analogies. You love analogies. They're great. A little while back, we rented a skid steer um, to move some, <laughs> uh, if you know, you know, those things are pretty cool. They're like dual track type of thing. And yeah. I was moving around, so we had some gravel delivered, we yeah. put it down in our, we had some potholes developing in our driveway. <laughs> and so I, and that was the one day that year it snowed. Do you remember that? Yeah. It was in like yeah. the end of March. <laughs> and it was like freezing snow in the Northwest. Not normal. So I'm running this thing around and that thing has many purposes, uh-huh. right? One of the purposes is it just goes, it carries stuff. It's, yes. It's but if heavy you don't realize that it can also flatten, it can also, yes. it can also like move dirt. It can do all sorts of things. And level stuff. You're missing out on the power of all that it is to be a skid steer or mm. to run a skid steer. And so marriage and sex are full of these purposes that so many times we just are used to running in our kind of what we're used to doing. Yeah. The easiest aspects, operations, yeah. if you, if you will. Yep. Um, that we miss out and you, you're not, you're not as fruitful as you could be. Well, and I wouldn't just say even the easiest, I think just our tendencies, right? Like we, we go to each other for certain reasons, but I think, you know, when you just, when you had that conversation <clears throat> with our friend about how sex can be something of like a comfort, which we'll talk about in a little bit, that was kind of mind boggling. And that was also like a blessing to know that, Mm -hmm. oh, wow, there's another purpose that I didn't realize that I wouldn't have thought of. That is not my natural tendency, but it's here. And and now I can step into this and experience this together. So yes, I agree. You get a skid steer. You just want to drive it as fast as you can straight and level some things, but there's also other purposes that it can serve. Right. You can even get different attachments different. and you can, Oh dear. This, this can be is really breaking weird. Down. You, <laughs> this I was going to say, yeah, there's things that I was, yeah. <laughs> it's always difficult to talk about <clears throat> sex and not have all the, uh, yeah. all the connotations. Jokes. So let's be adults, right? Grow up, <laughs> grow up, grow up. All right. Godliness. <laughs> it's good stuff. Okay. You want to jump right to here? The, the purposes themselves, or do you want to go back to the hope for the conversation here? No, I mean, we just, yeah, we hope that it's, it's provides you with a basic biblical foundation. I think, like I said, so, uh, the first one that seems very obvious. And I think as Christians, we just, you know, we step into that on our our wedding day is just the procreation, right? The fulfillment of the cultural mandate in Genesis, God says, go be fruitful, multiply, fill the earth and fill the earth and subdue it. I'm like, where's take dominion, fill the earth. Depends on the translation, right? So, uh, sex clearly facilitates fruitfulness, uh, of people. <laughs> right. You have kids. Sex is the way, the only way yes. that we can procreate and have children. So clearly that is one of the purposes. Yes. And, and I think that's on the obvious side of the purposes of sex. Mm-hmm. Uh, well, you actually don't be surprised. It's not really on the obvious side like, these well. days. It's like everybody wants all the sex without any of the fruitfulness yes. of it. Uh, that's a whole nother different conversation. It's another episode or two. Um, <clears throat> happy to talk about it. Just don't have time here to do that. Another one is sex is a gift. Now, what do you mean by that? Do you mean that it is? I, it's a gift to be enjoyed versus like a duty more. I think it is a duty. I think it also is a gift, but I think right. we can sometimes our tendencies again can weigh heavily into one or the other, uh, which can, I think, keep us from stepping into the various purposes uh, with both feet, right. And experiencing the goodness that God has for us. I think this is an obvious one. And here's yeah. why, because everybody wants sex because it is good. They want to go out and have the good aspects of it. The, the, the sense of in some way connecting yeah. with another human being, mm-hmm. the, the physical pleasure of it, yeah. the, the fun and joy and all the things that yeah. come along with the activity itself, but they want none of the responsibilities. So mm-hmm. I think it's very obvious that it's good but what you're saying is different from the worldly perspective, which is good in that it's a gift to be stewarded. So right. if someone, uh, like if you had a nice house and you say, I'm going to give you this wonderful house, mm-hmm. well, that's the equivalent of using, are you using that house as a residence or as an Airbnb? Mm. Are you going to go in there and just party for a few days and leave and trash it and leave, you know, they'll mm-hmm. find you on Airbnb, but <laughs> pretend like they wouldn't, uh, you know what I'm saying? So yeah. it's a gift that's been given to you to be stewarded, to be lived in fully, yeah. to be cared for. Yeah. And not neglected and not right. trashed right. and not, you know, let hand mishandled and mishandled. Yeah. yeah. So 
Number one, <laughs> sex. Uh, one of the purposes of sex is fruitfulness. Number two, uh, it is a gift to be enjoyed. Mm-hmm. Number three, um, <laughs> this is, we're going to spend a lot of time here, dominion. And this is, uh, Selena and I were talking before this, and this was an idea that kind of sprung to your mind. And mm-hmm. I'm, I'm really curious to flesh it out here. What do you mean that the purpose of sex is dominion? It's a practicing and exercising dominion in our marriage. So as we live out those roles of head and helper, husband and wife, like even within sex, we're exercising the dominion that God gave us within our marriage covenant, right? Uh, And so interestingly enough, godly dominion also requires submission, right? So submission by both of us first to the Lord. And then the husband is called in Ephesians 5 to love his wife and to give himself up for her, right? And the wife is called to submit and respect her husband uh, as the loving head of her house, of the household that God has placed over her. So she is to respect him. Sex is a consistent way in which we obey God and we live out that purpose that he's given us, thus uh, furthering and fulfilling and making sure dominion for his kingdom is, is happening on earth. Like we're talking about it when we're connected, when we have our intimacy is, you know, on par and it's been consistent and, and we just, we feel like on target, you mean on target. Yeah. Yeah. You feel like there's, you're furthering the kingdom of God, right? You're, you're working. To, you, Someone's got to well, do it. Someone's got to do the coming work. Apart now. <laughs> but I hope that uh, dominion just was the word I think that came to my mind because yeah. you're, you're actively connecting with one another on Every level, right? We said it's multidimensional. Especially when, uh, if you don't feel like connecting and right. you say to yourself, you say to your spouse, this is a, an activity God has called good. Yeah, It is a healthy for us to do. We're going to fight for it, even though I don't feel like it for whatever reason, whether yeah. there's emotional blockage right. or you're tired, right? things like that. Right. But when you, when you look at each other and say, we are going to do this for the good of our marriage because mm-hmm. it, we recognize it as the good gift it is, that I think is taking dominion. And we, right. we, in our pre-talk, as we were preparing for this, I, I thought this thought came to mind that every time a Christian couple has sex, <laughs> it is another blow of the battering ram on the gates right. of hell. Right. That you are saying to the enemy, we are doing this thing that you've tried so hard to pervert. Mm-hmm. You've tried, I'm not going anywhere else for it. Mm-hmm. I'm not looking anywhere. I'm not being satisfied by any other woman. Right. I'm not wanting or desiring any other woman, mm-hmm. but instead in the devil's face, right. we're doing this good thing in this right place at this right time with mm-hmm. the right person. Mm-hmm. And we're going to enjoy it for the right reasons. in your face. Yeah. Now, granted, he's not invited into the, into the right. marriage, bed, <laughs> but that's in your face. Yeah. Like, that's and, dominion. And, and, we're doing, and we're doing it to the glory of God. Yeah. Every time you, you're taking a stand right. for what is good, right, beautiful, and true right. in the context of marriage and your own marriage. Amen. Amen. And we amen, see amen. this in Genesis uh, 1, 26 through 28. Then God said, let us make man in our image after our likeness and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the birds of the heavens and over the livestock and over all the earth and over every creeping thing that creeps on the earth. So God created man in his own image in the image of God. He created him male and female. He created them and God blessed them and said to them, be fruitful and multiply and fill the earth and subdue it and have dominion. Over the fish of the sea and over the birds of the heavens and over every li- living thing that moves on the earth. Hmm. Yeah. I know that dominion is being directly correlated to animals, you know, okay, stewarding but, uh, the things okay. of. I'm going to get you out of this one because. <laughs> every living thing. <laughs> no, but because, okay, think about who we are as people. Right. Uh, who we are as people made in the image of God. Yes. The assignment that he's given us, right. it is to subdue the earth. To take dominion. It is not just something we do. It is who we are as right. people. And we to can take dominion. We do that better, would it's you a, argue? And if, better how? when we're connected, when we are having, when our intimate life is flourishing. I mean, if you're a married couple, absolutely. Like right. if you're Sorry, a single man, I mean. Paul makes a case that you might yes. as well, you know. But the point is, is that we, in anything that we do that is in conformity with the will and decree of God, and we do it unto the glory of God, right. not unto our own glory, our own selfishness. Yeah. We are in some sense acting out as we should always have been acting out the idea of taking dominion. Yes. Now you have to kind of take what we're saying and, and I don't want to read that in the text, but I think it is there in mm-hmm. the sense that we are just doing what we were called to do because of who we are mm-hmm. as people made, yeah. created in the image of God. Yeah. So uh, number three, dominion. All right. Um, <laughs> number four. 
Unity. Now this is, we get back to some of the more obvious ones, but let's talk about it anyway. Unity, oneness, becoming one flesh. We are not two people. Right. Well, we are not just two people. <laughs> yes. We are individuals, but we have become one flesh. You have become one flesh with right. your spouse in marriage. And by consummating, we talked about this in the past and we got a little bit of pushback, but we've answered those questions. The idea that every time that you are connecting, having sex as a couple, you are, what did I say? You're renewing, renewing your, your covenant. covenant. Yeah. Now that's not to say your covenant's broken. Like the covenant's still there. Right. Really, if you're reminding yourselves of this covenant, right. you're re, uh, it's like you're re-celebrating it. Right. And one um, of the purposes of, again, having sex and and how sex unifies you is that it it cuts you off from drifting apart, right? So I know that seems obvious, but we're like, unity, yes, oneness. Well, what is our default, though, without this? What is our default when we're not connected, when we're not um, fighting to remain close uh, and, and fighting for a, a consistent, intimate life? Uh, it's going to be right. drifting. We're going to drift in every on every level, spiritually from each other, we'll drift, um, physically when again, and there's just, yeah, which actually I want to go to the next one, yeah, uh, go ahead. the last one in your list, but we're going to move it up is protection. Yeah. So when we are, I loved how you said that. Not we, we use don't, protection. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> That's a whole nother conversation. We don't touch. <laughs> yes, it is. I'm happy to have that one too later. Uh, we, uh, it, whenever we are, how did you say it? We don't naturally drift toward unity. We drift no. toward isolation. Yes. And so when we recognize one of the purposes of sex is to keep us unified, Mm -hmm. I think one of the secondary effects of that and one of the purposes we're talking about today is Mm -hmm. that it gives you protection. And yes, not protection in the contraceptive sense. That's another episode. You can find it. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, But really in terms of temptation. Yes. We see this in scripture, 1 Corinthians 7, 5. We read in the past, do not deprive one another, except Mm -hmm. perhaps by agreement for a limited time. Two things there, by agreement and for a limited time. Mm -hmm. It's not indefinite. That you may devote yourselves to prayer, but then come together again. Why? So that Satan may not tempt you Mm. because of your lack of Mm self-control. So it's a sin to withhold sex from your spouse. Mm -hmm. Like it's just now if you, if you don't, if you can't bring yourself to do it, Mm -hmm. then that's just friends. That's just, that's a bubbling up to the surface. Mm -hmm. Like the, the issue is deeper than this then. Right. Right. Absolutely. And so this is not us saying just grin and bear it yeah. and, and make it happen. Yeah. Our encouragement for you is to see it for what it is yeah. as the warning light on the dash that it is and talk to a pastor, talk to each other, Yeah. Uh, consult scripture, yeah. Uh, repent of sin if it's there. Mm-hmm. And, you know, if you're hurting, this, these things could be hard conversations to have, but uh, that's the only way through the pain. That's well, the and they're worth fighting healing. for. There's promises on the other side. There's blessings to be had on the other side. Like God is not abandoning you to just this fight of never, you know, never finding reconciliation, never finding yeah. uh, joy. There's, there are promises on the other side. There, uh, we received a question today um, from a, a woman who her husband doesn't desire her. Mm-hmm. And she, she has tried to talk about it, tried to, uh, reconcile with him, but he doesn't seem to be coming to the table. Mm. And her concern is her primary concern in that is that for whatever reason that she, she blames herself for whatever reason, or he has articulated that he thinks it's her fault. We don't know this couple, so it's hard to say what's going on, Sure, but she is concerned that he is going to go elsewhere. Sure. Absolutely. It's a very valid concern. This is exactly the need that she's, this is the purpose of sex that sex that she's desiring to fulfill is the Unity, but then the protection from protection from temptation, temptation from, from going uh, elsewhere. Yeah. How many stories have you heard where somebody is lonely? They're not getting mm. the affection, the attention, the love that they desire at home, or at least they think they deserve. And so they start finding all the little comments from coworkers, very mm. attractive. Or all mm-hmm. of a sudden, you know, the Joe, attention, Joe yeah. from accounting is a very, he's a gentleman, right? He, mm. he speaks to me with respect. Mm. And, you know, pretty soon, you know, that protection is not there because you're not, so. Your guards are let down. Your guards let down, right? So, which kind of leads us uh, nicely into the next point of this, of sex. Uh, One of the purposes is that it is exclusive. And I know that seems obvious, right? But it's something that should not be shared with anyone else. We say this over and over again. And, but why? What's the purpose of not sharing it with someone else? Well, the type of relationship that can hold, I think, the depth, and I don't want to say heaviness, but like the, the weight, I guess, of this type of interaction is only the marriage covenant. Like that's how God designed it. And Mm -hmm. so the exclusivity speaks to that 
weight, that holiness, that mm. uh, purpose that God has for sex. It's not to be shared with anyone else, no screens, no anything else. It was designed by God to be between one man, one husband, one woman, one wife for life. Um, again, there's a depth, there's a familiar familiarity, there's a bond that's cultivated in this act over and over and over again. It's, it's the, it's the, the unifying of two souls. Um, and it can only be experienced and fully realized within the marriage. And, and that marriage covenant is the only thing that can hold the weight of this type of interaction again. And yeah. the bonding that happens there. So Hebrews 13, four, let marriage be held in honor among all and let the marriage bed be undefiled for God will judge the sexually immoral and adulterous. So uh, that, that I want to make sure that we connect that passage to what we just said, the exclusivity of it. Sorry. Yes. So uh, some couples will ask us, well, is it okay to watch pornography as long as we both agree to it nope. and that we're both okay yeah. with it? Yeah. No. Nope. The answer is no. I don't know. Our culture is obsessed with this idea of mutual consent being the ultimate moral indicator right. of something. <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah. If, just well, because if we're you in want agreement to do on it, it, doesn't mean it's good. It's a right therefore. thing. Yeah. <laughs> hundred <laughs> percent. So <laughs> it's like my three-year-old wants to eat cookies all day. Well, just cause she wants to do it doesn't. And maybe, maybe right. her friend agrees with her. doesn't mean that it's right. And this, this by know? no means do we mean to say that, that someone consenting to an activity doesn't matter, but we're just Sorry. saying that is yes. not the moral no. boundary. Yeah. God's word is our. Right. Us thinking something's okay together. Yeah. Does not make that thing okay. hundred percent. Cause that's a, well, that's a downward spiral of mutual sin. Right? Yes. And that's yes. called codependency. And that's how you, you could fall down all sorts of, uh, crevasses that way. <laughs> so, uh, what do we mean by, so pornography together and that's not, that's someone else via image yeah. is coming and sound is coming into your marriage bed. You're right. defiling it. Mm -hmm. Uh, sex toys that are modeled and shaped after human organs. Yeah. Uh, that's shaped after someone that yeah. wasn't like, and, and embellished by computers probably. And yeah. then whatever, how are they right. make those things? Right. Uh, that's bringing something else, someone else in. Yeah. Not something, someone else. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm due for a conversation with a listener. He's a, actually become a friend. Uh, Christopher, if you're listening to this, hello. Uh, about the the nature of AI and mm. generative pornography mm -hmm. and, and how AI is already, like it's already happening. Mm -hmm. And what, what are the moral implications for a godly woman, a godly husband, mm. for an image that is not a person? Right. It, it's not a person. But it came from a person. Uh, uh, it, it's modeled after a person. It's modeled after, yeah. Yeah. And so uh, it's a pretty simple conversation, but it's also the, when you dig under the surface, it starts to get interesting for mm. me. Maybe we won't do that here. Maybe somewhere else. Philosophically, it's very interesting. <laughs> anyway. Um, okay. So that's number six. Number seven is our enjoyment. We talked about that up front, but this is, um, so sex is a gift was number two, but this is enjoyment. I think, uh, well, I th there are, you know, people can view it as more of a duty. There are, I think people that sit to one side of like marriage is just a duty to fulfill. It's a way to have kids and that's kind of it, sex right? Is yeah. Sex is a duty. So Again, this answers the other question of that, or it goes along with the fact that marriage is a gift. It's a blessing, right? And read the Song of Songs, Song of Solomon, right? You will f see the enjoyment that two people, a oh, husband and wife had for one another, right? Um, it, It's not wrong, I think, to seek enjoyment. But again, if that's the only thing that you're seeking, right? Is just the, the, the and pure, if, if like, one-sided. And if, if it's, it's one-sided, yeah. right. If you aren't having those awkward conversations with each other on a regular basis, if you're not connecting and talking about your sex life and it's just one person dictating, uh, and there's not this mutual conversation happening, then, um, that's, that's wrong. You know, there needs to be a mutual enjoyment, mutual edification for both people. Yeah. And that being the case, uh, have fun, like yeah. really have fun. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, God, our, our good father gave this as an enjoyable thing. Yes. Uh, again, with the analogies, if you buy your children a, one of those big toys that we are not going to get, <laughs> it's fine. but one of those big toys, you put it up in your backyard yeah. and he, like, what is going to make you happy is if they're playing on the thing. Right. There, there's, there's monkey bars, there's a slide, <laughs> there's a little fort thing, there's a little climbing wall. Like, I don't care what you do. Just stay in the playground, stay in yeah, the backyard right, and right. play on the thing. Like right. enjoy it for what it is. <laughs> yes. Like, that's what our good father, I, takes, I think, takes joy yes. in seeing his children enjoy this good gift he's given. Right. Um, next one. Uh, this one is a little more uh, 
I'll say esoteric, but it's very core to what we're trying to accomplish here is sex is a gospel reminder. Mm -hmm. Now there's this movement of the last 10 years where everything is gospel centered, right? Gospel centered this, gospel centered that. We have gospel centered marriage. We have the (laughs) online course and that can kind of be quickly uh, misunderstood. So what we mean by this is that it is a reminder that we are sinners. We are imperfect Mm -hmm. and then we are naked in our sin before all knowing God. Yes. Yes. But still, what does God do in Christ? What does mm-hmm. he give us? His love, his, his salvation, pardon, his yeah. attention. He gives us his pardon. So when we are naked, married people, doing married people things, <laughs> it, that's a reminder that, right. oh, I, I, you know, I'm, we're, we're aging. You know, I'm not as fit as I once was. You're every Which bit you're of, as good you're once as you ever, ever were. Yeah. <laughs> was, no. And, yeah. no, it's, yeah, no, it's a good reminder, I think. And yet my spouse, my wife still loves me, still right. accepts me, right. still gives her love to me, still receives my love. Right. You freely. know me the best physically, spiritually, emotionally, everything. And you still love me the most, which right. is such a reflection of God's love for us through Christ. And we must not take that for granted must because not that take is that something as Christians, uh, I think we do take for granted that when you are, both of you are in Christ and you are living life in, before the face of God yeah. in the light of God's grace, you take for granted the fact that, wow, what a miracle that yeah. we love each other. Yes. Genuinely. Yes. And I think sex is a reminder of that miracle. Right. And Proverbs is full of verses about, you know, a man's ways are before the Lord's eyes, right? He mm-hmm. sees, he ponders all his paths. Like we are not hidden from from God. Our, our motivation's not hidden. Um, who we are, our desires, everything is laid out bare before mm-hmm. him. And so, again, Thank you, God, for sex. Thank you for the reminder that it is of the gospel. Like, again, it, it, God is so good in, in his how he creates things to have multi uh, purposes. <laughs> it sounds so funny. Multi purposes. Multiple purposes. <laughs> Multiple purposes. And then uh, the final one that yeah. we'll cover today is comfort. Sex is a comforting act. It is something where if you are mourning mm-hmm. or you are feeling, I've had a, a couple bad weeks um, so for kind various of bummed reasons. Out. <laughs> my cushy office life <laughs> um, where I have just been like, man, I just feel a little bit crushed. Yeah. I know, I know that God you know is the good. Truth, I know, you know that yeah. I've not lost my hope, but you just feel crushed. Yeah. And so I go to sleep and I'm just like, I need comfort from you. And it's not just all the comforts. Right. I want all the comforts from Come me. Come here, baby. <laughs> <laughs> yep. And then that's a wonderful thing, is it not? And we see the example, the precedent for this is in Genesis 24, 67. Then Isaac brought her into the tent of Sarah, his mother. Isaac's mother had just died. Mm-hmm. And he took Rebecca and she became his wife and he loved her. So Isaac was comforted after his mother's death. Mm-hmm. Comfort. Mm-hmm. And how, when's the last time wife, husband, you've looked at your spouse and said, I'm just, you know, I feel crushed. I feel because of X, Y, or Z Mm -hmm. and I, I need your comfort right now. And I would, I want it in this way. Yeah. Sex is. That's okay to say that. Yeah. Sex is a familiar place. It's a, it ideally is a very safe place, right. For a a husband and wife to come together. And so there's almost like boundaries around it, right. The Hebrew verse of like keeping the, the marriage bed holy. And like, this is the place where all of those things can fall to the wayside just like your clothes <laughs> and you can just come together and enjoy one another and enjoy the, the gift right. that God's given you and be comforted Yes, and by the only person who can come for you in that way. Yeah. So uh, our encouragement to you is to embrace mm. these, uh, these purposes. So we, we want to give you some tangible ways to apply this. Yeah. And so we have an acronym. It's this very simple act, ACT, <laughs> ACT, number one. And so if you look, if you're trying to grow in your, this area of your life, right. number one, here's what you can do. Assess your current sex life. Take mm-hmm. an honest inventory. In other words, um, what's your talk, f- talk about it. Yeah. Talk about what's your frequency. Talk about, uh, you know, the quality of the experience and kind of maybe your, your desires, your spouse's desires. Right. Um, well, last week we talked about doing a check-in. And yep. sex is on the list Absolutely. of things to check in. So yeah. this is just that part of the check-in. Yeah. How are we doing? How am I doing loving you yeah. in the bedroom? Right. And then you would ask me, I'm not just coming to you say, you don't love me well. Yeah. But instead, yeah. we are assessing it together yeah. with the common goal yeah. that we want to make it better. Right. Uh, and then so, number two. So A is assess, C is communicate. 
Um, this is kind of the same thing, <laughs> but this is the unique take on it as you're okay, talking well, about would, it, assessing sorry. it beforehand. I would assess it like on your own. So it takes, make some, make this a conscious effort. Like, okay, we're going to talk about this. I want you to assess our sex life. I'm going to assess, assess it. And then we're going to communicate it and have a conversation. I would probably change that to conversation <laughs> so, about it. So, but then that doesn't work on the acronym side. So it does conversation <laughs> oh. instead of communicate. Okay. Number C is conversation then. And that, so it's <laughs> having that conversation before, but also after yeah. and even during. Yeah. Like that's okay. It's, it's okay. You can talk. How, how are things going? Are, yeah. are you good? Like you don't, it doesn't have to be some, a silent endeavor. Yeah. <laughs> you can still communicate. <laughs> yeah. Like do it. Yeah. And then the final one T is try. Yeah. Um, it's a call to keep fighting the good fight. That's so even if you feel like you're up against a wall and mm. you've, you've tried and tried and tried, we're saying try again. Yeah. Do so prayerfully. Do so after you've assessed and communicated. Right. You've, you've got on the same page about this. Yeah. Um, don't stop learning. Be willing. Yeah. Um, be willing to give and receive love in ways that you might not feel 100% comfortable with. Sure. Like take risks for one another. Yeah. Um, and start to, re- start to rebuild trust. Mm-hmm. Um, and by, by the grace of God, that trust will be rebuilt. And of course, this always goes without saying, but I have to say it. Don't re-break the trust. Right. Right. <laughs> like, let right. it, let the, like, don't, don't, uh, pick off the scab, right? right? Let it heal. Yeah. But a lot of couples, they, they don't let it heal. They right. start the healing process, then they, they re-injure themselves. Right. So you got to stick to the course. Submit yeah. your marriage to Christ. Um, that being said, if you've made it this far, clearly you care about this topic, but this is the, the big, big caveat is that none of this makes sense outside of mm. the saving grace mm-hmm. of our good God. Yeah. And we see that saving grace through the person of Christ, who is God, who became flesh. He was born. On Christmas Day, that's what we celebrate. Yeah. He lived a perfect life. Mm-hmm. He died the sinner's death on uh, Good Friday. That's what yeah. we celebrate on. We kind of celebrate it. But what it means on right. Good Friday is that he's dying. Why? On our behalf. Yeah. So that I don't have to die the sinner's death. Mm. But did he stay dead? No. Easter Sunday. He mm. rose from the grave. And now he sits at the right hand of the Father, mm. reigning and ruling to this day as mm. our good Savior. And we place our faith in him. Yes. We say, God, you are God. I am not. Jesus, you are holy. I am not. I need your grace over my life because I cannot save myself. Man. I need you to pull me out of, I can't, dead men don't reach. Right. I can't reach and grab you. I'm dead in my sin. You have to reach down and grab me. Please do so. And I, I believe that's that's what it means to be saved. Mm-hmm. So none of this makes sense unless you understand the love of Christ, mm-hmm. the love of God in Christ, and we want you to be a Christian. So to that end, we have three recommendations. One, you find a friend who's a Christian and say, talk to me about Jesus. Mm-hmm. We read the Bible together. Number two, find a church that preaches out of the Bible. If you don't know where a church like that is, we have a website. It's thenewsisgood.com. That's number three. There's some g- general ideas about what the gospel is, definitions of what the gospel is, but also there's a church finder there by the good people at Ligonier Ministries. Nice. It's an awesome church finder. Uh, get into a church, listen to the word, and we pray that that blesses you. We want to call you brother and sister in Christ. Mm-hmm. Let's pray. Father God, we love you. Thank you for um, the gift it is of marriage. Thank you that you have shown us that uh, sex is good and it's good in one place in marriage. And you've given us within that one single boundary, so many joys, mm. so many things, so many purposes to be stepped into, mm-hmm. to be experienced, uh, and to, uh, things to accomplish through this gift you've given us. I pray that you would help couples who are struggling in their marriage in general, couples that are struggling around this idea of intimacy and mm. they're maybe feeling f- afraid right now. They're feeling a challenge being placed on them. And I pray that that's a challenge that's from you, not from us not from them, but from you. I pray mm-hmm. that it would bear fruit in their lives and they would, as they step forward and responding to that in faith. We, pr- we pray all these things in your son's name. Amen. Amen. All right. Thank you for joining us for the Fierce Marriage Podcast. Yeah. If you want to join the Fierce Fellowship, we would love that. Go to fiercemarriage.com slash partner. <sighs> Other than that, <laughs> we will see you again in time. And I pray that next week I will be feeling fully better. So you, uh, yeah. this episode of the Fierce Marriage Podcast is. And we'll see you again in about seven days. Until next time. Stay fierce.